fiery horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hot Ohio silver, the Lone Ranger. Masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. pitched a temporary camp in the hills near Eagle Pass. They decided to remain there a few days to make necessary repairs on worn riding gear. One afternoon, Tonto, who had gone to town, hurriedly pulled rain at the camp. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Gone longer than I expected, Tonto. Uh, let me see Indian smoke signal from hills. Them hunt for you. Did you go find out what was wanted? Uh, me go meet Indians. Them say Padre want Lone Ranger come to mission. We'll see. Must be important. The break camp and set out for the mission right away. Two days later, the Lone Ranger and Tonto arrived at the mission. Oh, no. Welcome, my friends. We came as quickly as possible, Padre. I know you would, amigo. Come inside, and while you rest, I'll tell you why I've sent for you. Very well. Come in. Come in, Tom. Uh, sit down, Amigos. Uh, thank you, Padre. My friends, the gang of outlaws is operating in the territory near Flint Hill. I see. Uh, that's not good. The gang is ruthless. He covers any trail that might be left so that the sheriff hasn't been able to find them. They must have a clever leader. See, si, Amigo. The man who leads them is very clever. You know who he is, Padre? See. Si. A few days ago, I traveled to Flint Hill. On the way back, I found a man lying on the trail. He had been shot, left for dead. But as I bent over him, he opened his eyes. Did he speak? See, si. As I started to help him sit up, he spoke. Uh, oh, it, it's no use, Padre. I, I'm done for. Perhaps I'll be able to get you to the mission, my son. No. <laughs> I'm going fast. I was with a gang of outlaws. The leader is... Black Honey. Easy. Easy, my son. Please. I argued with Black Honey. Too many killings. Said I I was gonna quit the game. He had me dry gulps. See, I've heard much of Black Honey. Uh, he's plenty smart. And plenty mean. Next week he plans to rob train. Carrying a big shipment of gold. Tell Sheriff the gang is hiding out over it. Oh. <laughs> oh. May you rest. 
rest in peace, my son. I must send for my masked friend. Tell him about this black army and his plan. Notorious Black Carney is leader of the outlaw gang you mentioned. See, si, amigo. Black Carney's men are a menace to the West. Isn't that right? It's too bad the dying outlaw didn't have time to tell you where the gang is hiding. I know. I took his body to Flint Hill and reported the matter to the sheriff. The posse has been hunting the outlaws, but without success ever since. He spoke of a plan to rob a train carrying gold. See, si, amigo. I learned from the sheriff that such a shipment will be on a train leaving Flint Hill tomorrow at noon. He plans to put deputies on that train. I see. If Black Harney doesn't get wind of it, the gang might run into trouble. Isn't that right? I knew you had hunted Black Harney in the Pecos territory, so when I found out he was down this way, I asked our Indian friends to send you a message. I'm glad you did, Padre. We'll set out in the morning and investigate the railroad right away for several miles out of Flint Hill. Maybe we find place where gang planned to stop train. That's what I'm hoping, Toto. We wait here until morning, Kimasabi? Well, we'll ride right at the edge of town this afternoon. You may get some news there. Then we'll come back here for the night, if the Padre is willing. But of course, Anil, you're both most welcome to stay as long as you like. Thank you, Padre. We'll start for town now, Toto. Uh-huh. I shall expect you for supper, my friends. We well, won't be gone long. Adios, Adios. Adios. Meantime, the outlaw leader, Black Harney, looked up as one of his men entered his cabin located in a secluded hollow. Howdy, kid. Any news in Flint Hill today? Yeah, plenty, Harney. Yeah, what, for instance? We learned, of course, that a padre who has a mission near here found Frank's body and took it to Flint Hill the other day. Yeah? What about it? Well, it seems Frank wasn't dead yet when he was found. He left the cat out of the bag about the plan to rob the train. How did you get that idea? I heard him out at the cafe say so. He's been made a deputy, and he's going to ride that train. You mean the sheriff is putting deputies on that train? That's right. That makes our plan to grab that gold shipment fall flat on its face. Well, maybe not, Kit. Maybe not. What do you mean, maybe not? You mean to say you'd be loco enough to try to go through it anyhow? <laughs> you ever play fireman on a railroad engine, Kit? No, of course not. Well, it's always the first time. I don't savvy what you're driving at. All right, just take it easy, and I'll tell you. I'm listening, but I'm not going to like it. Now, look, Kit. You've been hitting the Alhu Trail with me long enough to know I always manage to outsmart any lawman. Sure, but this is different, honey. I don't hang to come up against a bunch of armed deputies who'll be ready and waiting for us to strike. <laughs> Give me credit for having some brains, will you? You know that water tank alongside the tracks about a mile outside of Flint Hill? Yeah. The train will stop there before it pulls into town to take on the gold. There's dense woods and underbrush across the tracks from that water tank. When the train stops for water, we'll be waiting there out of sight. And then what? While the fireman and engineer are busy at the tank, we'll be able to get into the engine cab. We'll take them by surprise. Tie them up, toss them out in the brush. Mm. Can you run the engine? Yeah. That's a good idea. But someone might get wise when we take the train into town. We'll smear our faces with black grease and take the chance. How do we get the gold? Well, the gang will go to the gorge beyond town and weaken the supports of the wooden trestle. They'll wait there till the train crashes into the gorge, then move in and take the gold. What about us? If we're running a train, how are we going to escape the wreck? We'll jump just before the train goes onto the trestle. Then we'll meet the gang when they come out of the gorge. Oh, honey, you sure got it all figured out. Yeah. That gold is as good as ours already. Yeah, come on, we'll go tell the others about it, huh? Right. <laughs> the lawmen riding that train are going to be in for an awful big surprise. <laughs> Ranger and Toto had ridden to the edge of town. The masked man waited in a secluded grove while Toto went into Flint Hill in search of news. About an hour later, Toto returned. Oh, come on, come on. Come on. Here, see anything that might be important, Toto? Ah. Me here fellow in Cafe say he made special deputy. Him say him help and plan to catch outlaw gang tomorrow. I was afraid the news would leak out. Black Harney is sure to hear about the sheriff's plan. That's right. Maybe outlaws not try to rob train now. I wouldn't be so sure. Knowing Black Harney's reputation, I wouldn't be surprised if he tried to outwit the sheriff's men and went after the gold anyway. It'd be taking plenty big chance, Kimasabi. Harney is known for taking chances, Toto. We'll go out in the morning as we planned and check the right of way beyond Flint Hill. Here's a little Get back to the mission, Toto. Easy, steady. Come 
Early the following morning, the Lone Ranger and Toto left the mission and rode to the railroad track just outside of town. Then they started along the right of way, keeping a sharp lookout for any sign of outlaws. Meantime, in town, the sheriff was talking to his regular deputy, Jake. Jake, you have a few hours before me and the other men get aboard that train. I want you to take two or three men with you and ride up along the railroad tracks looking for any obstructions the outlaws might use to stop the train. That's all right, Sheriff, but a small number of us won't be any match for Black Harney and his gang if we happen to spot them. Now, hold on. I'm not sending you out to fight them outlaws. If you do spot them or anything on the tracks... Ride back toward town and flag the train. Yeah, what then? We'll know what to expect and we'll be ready for them. Well, yeah, but suppose they spot us. Then get away the best you can and head back here to town. Now, get going. If we get Black Hardy and his gang, it'll be a big day for all of us. The Lone Ranger and Toto investigated the tracks for several miles, going as far as the trestle but seeing nothing suspicious. They ring to a halt. Oh, 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 oh. Come several miles, Toto. Ah. Man, no sign of outlaws. Maybe that we've started out too early. The gang may have picked out a place to stage the robbery somewhere between here and town after we pass by. Uh, what we do now, Kimasabi? We'll turn and go back. Well, maybe them decide not to hold up train because of guards riding in cars. Could be. But until that train is safety on its way, we can't be sure Black Honey did change his mind. Let's turn back now. Oh, Meantime, the deputy Jake with three other men rode along the railroad track toward the track road. As they rode along a trail that followed the rim of a canyon through which the railroad went, they could look ahead for some distance. Suddenly, Jake pulled rain. Oh, 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 oh. What are we stopping for, Jake? Uh, from up here, we can look far ahead along the trail. I wonder if you see what I do. Hey, a couple of hombres riding down along the right of way. Yes, yeah, they're heading into the canyon. And they don't see us up here. Looks like one of them's masked, too. Sure it does. Well, thank golly, maybe that's Black Honey himself. Yeah, since there's just two of them, we'll ride back till we get to the end of the canyon. We'll get the drop on them there from behind some boulders. Now, let's get moving quick. Yes, yes, yes. The Lone Ranger and Toto rode through the canyon, moving at a slow pace. As they approached the end of the canyon, a warning shot came from behind some big boulders. Oh, 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 oh. Shot come from behind big boulder. Yes, it was a warning shot. High over our heads. All right, All right Dozy says, Tuttle. Ah. All right, come on. Hey, Jake. Bet that mass comedy is Black Honey himself. Yeah, keep them both covered, man. We'll soon find out if it's Honey. Before we take him back to town with us, I'll go take off that mask of his. And then we'll know for sure. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scene, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Removing the mask, the Lone Ranger waited tensely. 
The four men sat in their saddles a few feet in front of the Lone Ranger and Tonto. And they were in a close group. A knowing glance passed between the masked man and his Indian friend. A glance that told Tonto to be ready for a fast move. The great horse Silver, too, tense. As a certain signal with a knee warned the intelligence stallion that he was to stand ready. Then as Jake started forward, the Lone Ranger shouted, No, Silver! <laughs> Instantly, the two horses plunged forward, rearing and pawing viciously. Silver flying four feet struck Jake, sending him flying from the saddle. And stopped front who struck the gun arm of one of the men. Their own horses plunged about, squealing and bucking. Before the startled men could regain their senses, the lone ranger and Tonto started away. circled away from the railroad, and knowing that the four men would trail them, kept riding in a fast gallop for some time. Finally, after using clever means to throw their followers off their trail, the two men pulled to a stop. Pulled to a stop. I think we're safe enough now, Tonto. We've lost considerable time. Yeah. We're on the opposite side of town. That's right. Look, Jim McCarthy. They're trained now. Yes, it's just leaving the water tank and heading for town. They're right over there to the tracks we follow. Move to the were only a short distance from where the masked man and Toto had stopped. Reaching the track, you could see the tank up right. ahead and started riding along the right of way. It's only a mile of town from that tank. The train may be there by now, taking on the gold shipment. Ah. You ride along behind the train with masks on, Kimasami. Maybe somebody shoot. It'll take only a few minutes to fix the disguise. A few minutes later, they reached the water tank and stopped where the water was still dripping from the big hole. The Lone Ranger removed his mask and changed his appearance with disguise materials. Tonto watched critically, then nodded. Oh, that's plenty good. There. There, that should do it. Help! Mm. Came from the brush just across the tracks. Come on. Help! Help! Sure, lucky you and that Indian came this way. Help me untie them, Tonto. There's those feet there. Wait, this knot. Who did this? Who are you? There. It was Black Harley and another outlaw. I came to after they hit me on the head and I heard them talk. Yes, and I did too. I'm the engineer from the train. He's the fireman. They took us by surprise and socked us, then tied us up. Harley and the other outlaw took your place. Yeah, that's right, mister. I heard them talking over a plan to wreck the train. Harley and gang is waiting in the gorge on the other side of town. Yeah, they weakened the test of support. Connie's going to jump from the engine with the other outlaws. They approach the trestle. And the trestle will give away when the train gets on it. And the train will crash into the gorge. We're losing time. It isn't far to town. You men will have to walk there. Come on, Toto. Do I get our horses from across the tracks and follow the train? in town, Harney and Kit sat on the small seats in the engine cab and looked back toward the platform where the express was being loaded. They had streaked their faces with black grease, and no one had questioned their identity. Harney spoke. <laughs> yeah, they're putting the gold ship in the express car now, Kit. Yeah. And look, there's the sheriff and his men going aboard, too. Like sheep going to sword. Hey, the conductor's giving a go-ahead signal. Well, we won't disappoint him. Here we go. Law Harney had put in charge, stood with the others, looking at the damage they had done. Well, Frank, that ought to do it, don't you think? Yeah, those big supports are sawed almost through, and the braces have been weakened. Man, our lives, that's going to be a sight when that train crashes. Uh, what time will the train get here to the vessel, do you think, Buck? How do I know? You can't count on these trains running right on time. Sometimes they're late as much as half hour or more. But in spite of that, we'll get ready right now. Frank? 
You get one of the boys and stay near the horses so they don't get panicky when the crash comes. Oh, all right. You won't have to worry about the horses. Mike and I will look after them so they'll be ready for a quick getaway. Good. Black Honey and Kid will meet us as soon as we get the gold, and then we'll head for safety. This wreck will keep everybody from town busy for quite some time, so they won't be missing that gold shipment for quite a while. <laughs> Maybe they'll never get away if the crash is planned, huh? Don't be a fool as soon as somebody finds the engineer and fireman tied up or Black Honey and Kid are going to leave them. They'll get wise that we'll be far away by that time. All right, let's get moving now. The place where we're going to wait until it happens. Come on, everybody. Right. was gaining momentum after leaving town as the Lone Ranger and Tuttle, who had circled to avoid the cloud at the station, swerved back to the right of way and raced alongside of the tracks after the speeding train. We have to make it, Tuttle! Come on, The great silver, followed by the faithful scout, responded to the urging of their masters and increased their speed, gradually closing the gap between the rear of the train and themselves. Meantime, the guard on the rear platform called the sheriff out, then pointed back. Hey, look, sheriff. Two armored chase the train. Here, they're part of the outlaw gang. Two men couldn't do us any harm. Anyway, why would they ride after us openly like that? Yeah, I'll throw some men at him? No. Keep the gun handy. We'll see what they're up to. Move Hey, they're moving up on the train. Yeah, there'll be a long side the platform here in a few seconds. I'm coming aboard. Keep your gun handy. I'll let him ahead. Lone Ranger moves up alongside the rear platform. Then as the sheriff, standing on the steps and hanging onto the handrail, reached out his hand. The Lone Ranger runs toward the platform steps. Here I come. Uh, you make it. You better explain. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, hello. hello with the horses. Now, mister, what's this all about? Why did you and that rescue... Black take... Party and one of his men are running the train. They planned to wreck it at the trestle. Oh, no. Go I'm going over to the top of the car. All right. I'll go through the train to the front end. I'll pick up some of the others on the way through the cars. By thunder, if what you say is true, we won't have a chance when we hit that track. The Lone Ranger climbed to the top of the swaying cars and started along the narrow car roof. He noticed the speed of the train was decreasing, and he knew the trestle was less than a mile ahead. From the report given by the engineer and fireman, when he and Tonto had found them near the water tank, the Lone Ranger knew the outlaws in the engine planned to jump before reaching the weakened trestle. Going down to the field of jump. I'm in a hurry. Finally, after making his way over the car top, the Lone Ranger approached the tender, where the wood for the engine was set. He could see both Arnie and Kip sitting on the cab seat and leaning out the cab windows. He wanted to get closer to avoid the danger of a quick move by either of the outlaws. Moving cautiously, he started over the logs toward the engine when the logs began to roll. Hey, look! An army coming over the tender! I'll fire! When the Lone Ranger wounded Kip, Black Harney flung himself from the seat to the floor of the cab, turning with his gun in his hand. Once again, the masked man's gun barked. Now I'll stop this train! and his men hurried to the engine. The Lone Ranger quickly explained the situation. Then the sheriff spoke. I come to mission. You saved us from the wreck. We caught Black Hart and one of his men. The rest are in the gorge. Well, we'll get them there. we got plenty of men. It isn't part of the gorge. That's right. They form two groups and go on foot. We ought to be able to trap them if we move in on them from each end. Let's get going. The Lone Ranger and Tonto, who had caught up with the train, led one group while the sheriff led the other. A signal was agreed upon, and the group separated, going to each end of the gorge. A signal was given and closed in on the gang. The outlaws were taken by surprise and the gun by hold of course. Finally, it was over. The Lone Ranger and Tonto rode back to the train. Then Tonto started for town with Silver and Scout while the Lone Ranger moved the train slowly to the edge of the trestle. Black Harney and his men were put aboard under guard. Then the Lone Ranger backed the train to the town of Flint Hill. When he stepped from the engine with the sheriff, Tonto was waiting with the horses. By thunder, if you hadn't come along, mister, maybe none of us would be alive. And Black Harney's gang would have had that go I'm glad we discovered Harney's time in time. Uh, my friend is waiting for me. Adios, Sheriff. Adios, and thanks for life. Sheriff! Sheriff! Sheriff, in a minute, wait with me. 
There were a couple of those auto hoops before the train left town. We've been trailing them, but we lost the trail. One of them was mad. Gosh, oh, right. Looks like that strange and the Indian did what they set out to do. He did plenty. Who are you, mister? I'm the engineer of this train, that's who. Tiny tricked me in the fireman. It was that strange. I know, that... I know. He did plenty, like I just said. Yes, sir, but the two outlaws we were trailing must have gone away. They were riding a white stallion and a paint. The Indian was on the paint, the mess made. Hold on. Look over there, huh? Hey, Sheriff, that's them. You see the mask on getting on the stallion? We've been away. I don't know why he put that mask on just now, but those two are the ones who saved the train and helped capture the gang, along with Hondi himself. What? The Indian told me who the mask on is, Sheriff, if you want to know. Well, don't stand there with your mouth hanging open and nothing coming out. Speak up. Who is he? He's a lone ranger. Created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.